And once again, it is a good evening. Maryland's home strength continues, 82-63 over the Cornhuskers. It was a, a bit closer, but really didn't get under 10 in the second half. Mason, what did you see out there? Yeah, the Terps uh, really just got going and, and started moving the ball well against a Nebraska team that's just been bad in conference. And look, this team's done something really well this year, which is beat the teams they should. At home, they get the job done by 19. And look, I was suspect. 12-point line coming in that favored the Terps. Uh, Maryland just not scoring the basketball. Bruce and I had that discussion well enough against a lot of teams to be favored by 12. But look, a fantastic night from the free throw line. And what did it end up? Six or five or six Terps uh, in double figures. I Actually, I think it was five Terps in double figures led by Patrick Emelian. He had 10, but he channeled his inner Buck Williams and Mason... If you've never seen Buck Williams play, it, it sort of looked like that. He wasn't taken from anybody. He's blocking shots. He gets seven rebounds. He does it all. And you'd like to, as the radio feed picks up behind us, Maryland didn't have a lot of spark at the beginning of the game or at the beginning of the second half. But soon after that, they got rolling. I want to focus on the second half. With about 10 minutes to go, it was still a 10-point game. And from there, Maryland really took it over. Jameer Young, of course, becomes the best player on the court. But what else did you see with that balanced scoring, especially from Don Carey? Well, at that point in the game, I think Nebraska also shot themselves in the foot. Uh, the technical foul, then the intentional foul. that turned into about a seven-point Maryland swing. But if you, if you go back and watch this game, one thing that Maryland did extremely well was just move throughout the offense. And Don Carey's shooting, I think, helps that out, along with uh, Dante Scott knocking down a couple threes. And look, when those shots start to fall, we all saw what this team can do. Today, they showcased that again. When they can hit those outside shots, they immediately stretch the defense. They broke the Nebraska zone that was hurting them early. And then they're just a dominant team when they can shoot the basketball. They've beaten quad one teams, quad two teams when they can shoot the basketball. Today, Maryland surprisingly picks up their first quad three win of the season. A uh, bunch of quad fours and quad one and twos, but Terps uh, pick up not really a quality win, but a conference win uh, is important for this team. It is, if you can get Indiana, which is Tuesday night, you're at Minnesota, you're at Michigan State, you come home to Penn State, you really could push this record, maybe you go through this string with maybe only one loss and really get back in an NCAA tournament, crawl back from being on the bubble to being solidly in this field of 68. We'll be back after this message from Viner Four Gates and from the Jack Lynch Law Firm, Maryland 82, Nebraska 63. With Viner Four Gates, you've heard the phrase, we make your company work. What that means to us is that we take care of every ticket, every call, all the time. If you're tired of waiting on hold for tech support, or it takes too long for your tech support company to get back to you in an email, try Viner Forgates, where making your company work is our primary mission. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. Find out why clients, judges, and other lawyers call us the big dogs from the small firm at 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. at Xfinity Center. To me, at one point, Maryland's 15 for 15 from the strike. Then Juju shoots an air ball. Those are the only two misses. He missed the, the following free throw. So I, I have to check the record book, but I have to believe when I believe it's 20 of 22 or 22 of 24, that's as good as it's ever been. So these guys get their details right. And I think as you look at the Willard record so far, you start to see the attention to detail 
does it jump out from you and your coaching experience? Yeah, um, not not as much from coaching experience because I haven't coached a sport where there's free throws or penalty kicks or anything like that. But the the detail, the intensity throughout the game, even when the bench guys get in, they're still pushing guys over and playing really hard. I think it's starting to show through in the team. But look, it's it's growing. A growing unit as a whole. They're going to have up games, they're going to have down games, and right now uh, as you mentioned, they got to string together a couple of those good games, win here on their home court, steal a couple on the road and look, I think if they make the tournament uh, they're, they're well ahead of where they should be. Right well now. ahead. Uh, the horn blew, the team ran off, and then a, a seven foot high school guy walked by and he said, there's the new recruit from IMG. If you add him to the other three, that's a heck of a recruiting place. Yeah, it is, and the Terps need size, and that's what they'll get uh, with their newest career. I believe it's Brandon Pierce from IMG Academy doing a post-grad year uh, down in Bradenton, Florida right now. And look, you just got to get size. That's one thing this team's lacking is size and guys that are ready to play down low. Uh, I still think the portal's got to give them a real power forward down there. Yes, yes. they don't really have that size, that 6'8 tight end, that Patrick Amelian size. They don't have one of those on the roster. They don't have one uh, recruited, but they will find one. The faith in this regime continues to build, and I think that'll be enough about this game. I do have to bring up the passing of one Billy Packer. Um, my goodness, he, he was the soundtrack to my younger days of watching the ACC on Jefferson Pilot, the Final Four, all those things. He's such a great ambassador for the game. I actually loved his sharp opinions and the way he looked at a basketball game. So with that, uh, for Mason Ryder, for Bruce Posner, who's off the camera for this evening, Maryland takes it. We move on to the next home game against Indiana. Good evening from Xfinity Center.